Creatures of the Night, it's your girl Tati. Let's talk about AEW Rampage. Just an hour long, not too much to talk about. We started off with tag team action. Once again, Orange Cassidy and Trent Beretta. They're going against John Silver and Evo Uno. This was actually a really great tag team match. Now I know we just saw Orange Cassidy and Trent last night on Ring of Honor. So maybe some of us are just feeling a little bit tired and not feeling the orange juice right now. However, really great match. However, it's predictable. Obviously, Orange Cassidy and Trent Beretta are looking for tag team gold since the tag team titles are vacant right now. And they've been winning every match that they've been in so far. And they actually have really great um, chemistry as a tag team. However, so does John Silver and Evo Uno. Now, there was a part of this match. I don't know why, but it just made me laugh a lot. But Evo Uno takes off his jacket, and I'm going to be real. Evo Uno, I don't know what it is. Your pants are probably too small for you, or you're gaining weight, and I'm not fat shaming, bruh. Well, all I'm saying is wear something that fits you right. Now, he takes off his jacket, and it falls on, on the mat. The referee tries, um, Evo Uno throws it, then the referee throws it, then throws it again, and throws it again, and it just would not leave the ring for whatever reason. It was absolutely hilarious. Unintentional, but hilarious. It's going to be on Botchamania. Um, great match with these guys. And I really didn't really care who would have won. Like, they did such a really good job. But we already know that they're pushing Orange Cassidy and Trent Beretta. Chuck Taylor, ringside, but useless, as usual. Um, they end up taking the win here. And I have to say, after this win, Orange Cassidy looked absolutely exhausted when i say exhausted like tired you 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 know i've been saying why after he lost the international title didn't he just go home go home uh, uh water your plants stay in bed watch netflix uh, um get a kitten something and, and just relax for a little bit but instead he's going looking for another title and he just looks so tired he looks exhausted he looks beat the hell up he's taped up everywhere new spot every time he's in another match and even the commentators called out how tired he looked and i'm like you you just cannot unsee that he looks like he should be at home. I don't know what's going to happen with this tag tournament. We did get the bracket um, and, and what teams are going to be all in there. Um, but I know Orange Cassidy, he has to be exhausted. I would love to see Orange Cassidy take the title simply because I would love to see Trent Beretta finally win the title. But I don't know. I don't know if this is in the stars for Orange Cassidy. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on. Now, we did get a little pre-video of the righteous just walking around in like some, I don't know, some like little hidden valley or whatever. And they're talking about how pretty much they're they're making a comeback after people try burying them, whatever that's supposed to mean. I like the righteous. I see uh, so much potential with them. And for whatever reason, they're not taking this group and making them as crazy as it can possibly be. But it looks like we're going to be able to see them on AEW since that um, little uh, video was on AEW, not Ring of Honor. So I would love to see them more often mingling and getting into match and storylines in AEW. That would be really great. After this, though, we get our girl, Soraya, who's getting her brother riled up once again to fight some random dudes in the back. And now he, he ends up threatening and putting his hands on two random dudes. And all of a sudden, the camera cuts onto Angelo Parker, who just came out of the blue. I don't know where he came from, but he was there and they're ready to fight. Hinton and Zach ready to fight after Zach had attacked him, not last week, but I think the week before. But then the use of security guards, they come out and actually do their jobs and keep these two away from each other. I love this storyline. I don't know where it's going. I'm really interested in seeing a match with these two. And I never thought I'd say I'm interested in seeing something with um, Angelo Parker. But the uh, storyline is getting interesting. Uh, Ruby was not there at this time, but we had Harley who was there. And she's watching Zach beat up these two random dudes. And the, the look in her face of like she's fucking turned on or something. I don't know what that was, but girl, she looked like she's enjoying it. That's how I'm going to be looking like tomorrow when I see Shibata versus uh, Brian Danielson, just looking like complete ecstasy. Like she was just absolutely enjoying the beatdown. I'm enjoying the storyline. Can't wait to see where it goes. All right, you guys. So right after this, we do have uh, Tony Storm, Mariah May versus Kayla Sparks and Little Mean Kathleen. I saw Kathleen, I'm like, oh, that's my girl right there. She is going to get squashed. And sure enough, she did. Now, uh, you know, this is, Tony Storm is a champion. 
Why put champions in squash situations? I don't know. This is her first time teaming with Mariah May. Mariah May, once again, dressed up as Tony Storm. And in my opinion, I don't think it's a great idea long term. I'm watching this and I'm like, okay, I get it. Because now you see that Tony Storm is actually acknowledging her existence simply because when she looks at her, she looks it's like it's as if she's looking at herself. So I get it. So she's giving her a little bit of a little bit of attention because she sees herself in Mariah May. However, Mariah May is very very new to AEW. Um, people who don't know her have not been able to figure anything out from her um, these past few months as she's been in AEW. And there's no way you're going to truly get to know who Mariah May is when she's being someone else on the roster that's already getting the fuck over. Um, I would be worried about getting over my damn self rather than anything else. But I get it. It's a storyline. We'll see where it goes and if it's going to be in favor of Mariah. And we already know that at some point, there's going to be some type of betrayal and the two of them are going to go against each other in the match. And that's going to be great to see when I don't know. However, uh, Tony Storm still has some business, unfinished business with Deanna Perrazzo. Uh, she's going to be going against Deanna um, on, in tag team action on Dynamite. So Mariah, Mariah May is already going to be her partner. Now Deanna has uh, to uh, reveal who her partner is going to be. And as soon as Thunder Rosa came out, I don't know why, I rolled my eyes to the back of my head and probably back again. And I was just like, oh, I should have seen this coming. I should have seen this coming. I wasn't thinking that someone was going to debut or anything, but um, I just wasn't thinking Thunder Rosa at the time. But it's going to be Thunder Rosa and it's going to be great. And oh my gosh, Diana Perrazzo, the way she dressed is just amazing. She looks so, so good. I love the way she looks. Now, after this, we do get a little um, teaser video of Queen Amanada, who is going to be in um, the Ring of Honor TV t uh, title tournament. This is a semi-final. She's going to be going against Red Velvet. Um, whoever wins that match is going to go on to the finals to face either uh, Mercedes Martinez or Billy Starks. If you ask me, it's probably really going to be Billy. I don't know. Now, um, great to see that they're actually mentioning something about Ring of Honor on, uh, you know, Rampage. But, you know, nobody watching Rampage either. So I guess it is what it is. Now, after this, we get Commander versus Takeshita. This was so good. And I'm telling you, I am just wiped the hell out when it comes to seeing Commander on my TV screen. However, they really did a really great job. Chemistry was great. Uh, Takeshita looks amazing. And, and one thing I kept seeing on social media is like, oh, Takeshita is one of the best wrestlers in, in AEW and just wrestling, period. Why the hell is he on Rampage? And I'm like, because there's no time for him on any other shows, apparently. I don't really care what shows he's on. Um, I would love to see him in more pay-per-views, that's for one. And I would just love for him to just be more of himself. Uh, I would love to hear him on the mic. I would love to just see the personality from him. This guy, he is going to win uh, major championships in the future, but they need to take bolder steps with him in, in the meantime. Um, a, a really great match with Commander. Commander, you, I'm annoyed with you, but... When it's time to get down and dirty and, and really put on a good fight, you really come through. And that's what he did with Takeshita here. Takeshita wins the match with a Falcon Arrow. And he just looks amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uncle Don obviously out there as well. Chris Jericho on the opposite side on the commentary table. And Chris Jericho, I have to mute Rampage now because I don't want to hear your voice. You're so annoying. I just can't take it anymore. Um... And like I said, really great match. And I'm just like, okay, we, we got to move forward with Takeshita. We got to do something. Um, for the tag team bracket that I just can't remember everybody who's in there. Um, the Don Callis family is in there. I don't believe that it's specifically named which two members are going to be in uh, the tournament. So it could be Takeshita and Hobbs, which is a team that I've been wanting to see. Um, who else? I mean, Kyle Fletcher, I don't see Kyle doing it. Um, Will Ospreay, I don't see doing it because he got his own thing with uh, our, our boy Brian. So I'm not sure where they're going with that, but it's going to be really interesting. Uh, most likely it's going to be Takeshita and Hobbs, but we'll see. I don't see anything confirmed with that. But if anything, y'all want to watch uh, any matches from Rampage, this one was a really good one. Takeshita impresses every single time.
All right, you guys, main event time. We have the Undisputed Kingdom versus Top Flight in action and ready and some trios action. We did have Mark Henry who introduced the match like how he used to do on Rampage, but they don't do those, you know, side-by-side -side interviews like they used to do when Mark Henry was in the middle and everything. I wish they used to do stuff like that. Stuff like that, little things like that. People actually appreciate that stuff, Tony Khan. Why are you taking that stuff off the show? Just like how they took off the interviews in the beginning of Collision. I used to freaking love when they did that. It didn't last that long, but whatever. Great trios uh, match. And I'm thinking, Top Flight, Ash and Andretti got an advantage because their chemistry is just A++. But then I thought about it and I was like, wait a minute, Roderick, the kingdom, they are Ring of Honor guys. They have experience with trios in the past. So I'm just like, you know what? They also have an advantage too. Really great match. And I know people love to hate the kingdom right now and Roderick Strong, but hey, they all got gold for a reason. They're really great wrestlers. They're professionals at what they do. And I absolutely do enjoy them in the ring. That little group they got going on, I'm not a fan of, uh, but we'll see whatever happened with that storyline. Now, well, I did enjoy this. I thought, well, you know, the Undisputed Kingdom, they all got titles. Why would they lose to Action Andretti and, uh, you know, Top Flight? And that's exactly what happened. They end up taking the W. It was Action Andretti that took the loss for the team. They gave him a spike pile driver. And then Roderick, being the legal guy, ended up hitting him with a backbreaker and go for the pin, one, two, three, and they end up winning. And I'm just like, ugh. I, I want them to win too. And I'm just like, they're an amazing team. Now, Top Flight, they're going to be in the tag tournament. And the uh, Unspeeded Kingdom are also going to be in the tournament too. And I'm looking at it, I'm just like, why? Um, why? As long as they don't advance, I don't care. I, I don't care. We probably could have got another team on that tournament. But I don't know. We'll know. Was uh, Rampage great? It was great. I actually enjoyed it. A nice little hour watching the TV, uh, watching wrestling. That's good enough for me. Um, I'm not expecting anything too out of the ordinary to just like, I don't know, impress me with the show, but it was good. Now, tomorrow we have Collision. We have our boy, Kyle O'Reilly, getting back in the ring. After two years, he's gonna be going against Brian Keith. That's gonna be interesting. And then we also have, Lord have mercy, Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. Um, Brian Danielson versus Shabata. That got to be the main event. That has to be the main event. Like, I, I don't, you guys, I say it again. Wrestling can be a sexual experience. And when I think about Shabata in the ring with Brian Danielson and what they're about to do, Lord have mercy, it just makes me feel so good. Guys, thanks so much for watching my review. Come back tomorrow and watch me watch uh, Collision and make a fool out of myself watching those two guys get in the ring. Oh my God, Brian, Shibata, these two do no wrong in my eyes.